In 3.5, we learn about implicit differentiation. So what is that uh, even in the first place? And then, of course, how do you do it? So let's take a look here. Um, we're going to first define an implicit equation. So um, an implicit equation, I've got the definitions there of an explicit equation and then an implicit equation. This is actually nothing new. Um, we have seen these for many, many years. We probably just didn't call them by these names. Okay, so an explicit equation there at the top is equa an equation that's been solved for y. Yeah, it looks like y equals such and such. We more commonly refer to those as functions. So what is an implicit equation? Well, it's just the opposite of an explicit. So it has not been solved for y. It doesn't look like y equals, although it will have x's and y's in it. The y is not isolated. Um, and then we say it's not necessarily a function. It, it's possible that it is a function. It's just not in the correct, it's just not in the typical form. Um, but more often than not, it's, it's not a function. Okay, so let me give you an example of an implicit equation, something that we've, uh, we've dealt with in the past, not, not in this class, but we've seen this uh, at some point before. How about x squared plus y squared equals 25? Okay, so that's not solved for y. It turns out that's not a function. And maybe let me ask you this. Do you know uh, what the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 25 would be, what it would look like. I believe this came up uh, in the geometry review <clears throat> at, the, at the beginning that I gave you guys at the beginning. So this is a circle. Uh, the center is at the origin and the radius is five. So I'll draw that for you here. Um, x squared plus y squared equals 25, that circle centered at the origin with a radius of 5. Okay, certainly not a function, right? But think about tangent lines and slopes of tangent lines. A circle still has tangent lines, right, at any point. So I highlighted this point here um, for a reason. Let's say that's the point 4, 3. Uh, that point would satisfy the equation so it would be a point on the circle. And can't we imagine a tangent line kind of coming down and, you know, passing through that point? Something like that, right? Okay, so just because what you're looking at is not a function doesn't mean it doesn't have tangent lines. So we should still be able to take derivatives of these sorts of things. All right. How are we going to do that? <laughs> uh, is another story. So here are the steps. Um, and they, they might not make a lot of sense as you write them. That's okay. We're going to do examples, obviously. So to find the derivative, and we're going to think of it in the form dy over dx. To find that, step one, Take the derivative of both sides, so of both sides of your equation, take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Okay, and then step two, solve for dy over dx. Okay, especially step two, you're like, what does that even mean? I've solved for this. Yeah, it doesn't make sense yet. Okay, we're going to do an example right now with this function. Let's go for it. And this method, by the way, is called implicit differentiation, what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to start with x squared plus y squared over 25, uh, equals 25, excuse me. To take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this, uh, this notation, d over dx of the left side equals d over dx of the right side, indicating I'm going to take this derivative, it's going to equal this derivative. Now, we haven't thought of a derivative in this way, right? We've always thought, hey, I have a function f of x, and I'm going to take its derivative, which will be f prime of x, right? 
we haven't thought of like a derivative as like an operation that we can do to both sides. But it is. Uh, we can, you know, if, if these two things are equal, then the derivatives must be equal as well, right? It's just something else that we can now do to both sides. Take a derivative. Okay, how is this going to work? Most of these things look familiar, right? X squared. Oh, got a lot of breeze going on here. I need my, my rock as a paperweight. Uh, derivative x squared. Okay, I know how to take that derivative. 25. I know that derivative. The interesting part is the y. What's the derivative of y squared? Okay, that's where we're going to spend our, our focus here. Let me just slide this paper up so we can see this all at once. And I've got some notes here. You can ignore that. We're going to go there in just a moment. This is what the derivative of both sides would be. Okay, again, some things look familiar. So derivative of x squared, that's 2x. All right, of course. Okay, no big deal. Derivative of 25, that's a constant. So the derivative is 0. What is up with this? The derivative of y squared is 2y times dy over dx. What is up with that? Maybe some of it is not that surprising, right? The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y. Probably that much, you know, uh, you know that, that, that seems okay. What's up with this dy over dx that gets multiplied on the end here? What, what is going on with that? Okay, let's turn our attention to the side. And uh, I've got an explanation here, and, and you can see my solving. So, okay, now ignore this side, and we're just going to focus here. <laughs> awkward to do this. All right, let's 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 just do that or something. All right. When you take the derivative of y squared, you have to think of it as a chain rule. Okay, so the outside is the square. The inside is the y itself. Why do we have to think of it like a chain rule? Okay, because although it's not written as a function, we're still thinking of x as the independent variable and y as the dependent variable. Okay? So y, it, it has, it's dependent on x. Like, you know, y is still going to equal something with x's involved, if that makes sense. And you're like, no, that doesn't. Okay, well, just go with me here. So if that's the outside and that's the inside, then how would the chain rule work? Okay, well, the derivative of the outside, the 2 would come down, and it'd be 2y to the first. Right? Then we would multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, what's the derivative of y? It's dy over dx. Because it's with respect to x. The derivative of y with respect to x is that, dy over dx. And we just use the derivative notation. Okay, so kind of, you know, even, you know, think back to a simpler case. You know, y equals, uh, let's just do something, you know, really simple. I don't know, x to the fourth, okay? Before, when we took derivatives, we just thought, hey, this is the original function. What's the derivative? But we could think of it as take the derivative of both sides, which is what we're doing now. And if we did that, take the derivative of both sides, well, what's happening here? The derivative of y with respect to x is dy over dx. And then, well, this would be 4x to the third. Same thing's going on. There's, right, we got this chain rule, and then we got to think, okay, what's the derivative of the inside? So the derivative of y is dy over dx. Right, if that's still confusing to you, hey, come to the Zoom, uh, the Zoom time. You know, we can chat about it. 
I can say a little bit more maybe. I don't want to say too much here because maybe you get it, and I don't want to confuse you by saying too much. Okay. If you can accept that the derivative of y squared is 2y times dy over dx because of the chain rule, now that second step in the procedure makes sense. We need to solve for dy over dx. So to do that, we're going to subtract our 2x. We're going to divide by 2y. And there it is, dy over dx, in this case, equals negative x over y. Now, let's go a little further. I pointed out that point on the circle, right? 4, 3, 4, 3. What's the slope of the tangent line there at 4, 3? Well, obviously, we're going to use our derivative, um, negative x over y. But this time, we're not just going to plug in the x value because it's not a function. We need to plug in the x and the y. There's the x value. There's the y value. Plug both of them in. And for this point, dy over dx equals negative 4 thirds. And if you think about that circle, I'll just sketch it again here really quick. All right, 4 comma 3 was kind of out here someplace. The slope of that line was doing this. And that makes sense, negative 4 thirds. I mean, it's definitely negative, And it's moving downwards faster than it moves over, right? It drops further than it goes. Negative 4 thirds. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So we could find the equation of that tangent line if we wanted, right? We know the point. We know the slope. We could do all that, all those same things that we could do with regular functions. We can now do with take derivatives of non-functions, implicit equations. Really cool. Uh, just to kind of dwell on this a little bit more before we go on, uh, how about a different point? What about 0, 5? Uh, 0, 5 would be the point right there at the top. What would be the slope of the tangent line there at the very top? I should probably keep this on the screen. Well, again, that's your x coordinate. That's your y coordinate. So we should plug both of those numbers in, and we'd get our derivative there is negative 0 over 5, which is just 0. And yeah, that's true. At the very top, you've got a horizontal tangent. The slope is 0. And so now, when you find the slopes, you need both x and y coordinates. Very nice. OK, let's stop there. We're going to do, uh, for this video, we're going to do more challenging examples coming up.